Hi guys, welcome to Mr. Dyer's Musings. I'm Mr. Dyer, and today we're going to be taking a look at first aid kits. As always, I'd like to thank my wife and family for their unconditional support. I'd like to thank you guys, my viewers, for taking the time to check this video out. I hope you like it. I hope you learned something from it. If you like historical artifacts and if you like uh, those artifacts being used, then this is the channel for you. And we have a ton of historical videos, Civil War and early camp craft and Boy Scout history. So please check those out after this one. I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon and I actually have something in the works this month um, to say thank you to my three Patreon subscribers who have been with me uh, pretty much since the beginning of opening up my Patreon account. And uh, they've actually been pretty much with me since I started this channel. So I, I want to give a shout out, especially since this is a month of Thanksgiving, um, to give them some appreciation. If you're interested in supporting the channel through Patreon, please check out the link and uh, help us out. I'd really appreciate it. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at first aid kits. And this is in line with me trying to wrap up the different things that scouts used to carry on their belts. One of you guys, my viewers, suggested that uh, eventually I show everything that a scout would carry on his belt because it is a lot of what was able to be put on a scout belt. I don't think scouts actually did it, but you know they, they could set themselves up to look like Batman if they really wanted to. Now the first aid kits that I'm going to show you today are the Bauer and Black first aid kits. I don't own any Johnson & Johnson first aid kits. That might be something I get into later on. Um, but I, I kind of focus on Bauer and Black just because I'm attracted to things that I've never heard of before. And until I started this impression, I didn't know who Bauer and Black was. So having the opportunity to, to collect some artifacts from them was a big deal to me. I like unique, interesting things. So let me start out telling you about Bauer and Black. I'm going to read from my notes here because uh, I'm afraid I probably wouldn't remember it all of it. So Bauer & Black is from Chicago. That's uh, number one. They started their company in the mid-1890s by Louis Bauer, Alexander Bauer, Gustav T. Bauer, and Stephen H. Black. Um, what's really cool about uh, Bauer & Black is that it was a company that was started by an immigrant. I think that's pretty neat. Uh, Louis Bauer was born in 1840 and died in 1909. He was born in Weingarten, or Baden, Germany. He immigrated to the U.S. in 1866 and engaged in the retail merchandise business in Minnesota around 1889. When he came to Chicago, he entered the surgical appliance line soon after that. Now, this I just read is directly from uh, History Wiki, and uh, I'll put a link in the description for you to check out more information about that. The first set of first aid kits that I'm going to talk about are ones from the 1920s. I have two examples. One, I'm not exactly sure when it was uh, made up. Here's the one. As you can see, it's a little worse for wear, but it's not terrible. It's not rusted or anything. It's got the gold wash still on it. Here's the other one. It's a lot better. And both these kits would have come with a cover like this, as you can see. It has a little uh, piece of cloth that can be worn on the belt. And you can see the scout seal on it. Now the button came off of it at some point. Now what would have kept been kept in these? Mercure chrome gauze. Mercurochrome swab, sterile gauze bandages, adhesive plaster, first aid for burns, soap solvent, Vivo swabs, and it says important, this kit should be kept filled. Replace each article as used. Your druggist can furnish the official Bauer and Black merchandise as standardized on and approved by the Boy Scouts of America. Insist on procuring it. There you go. 
go. Now, as I go through each of these examples, I'm also going to read off, you know, what they would have been used for. But the one kit still has this little booklet in it, and it dates to 1926 on the copyright. Copyright. This is a pretty cool little book. It's got you know, little drawings on it, descriptions, and what I really love about vintage scouting booklets and instruction manuals, they're written in a way that's not like a college textbook or a school textbook, you know, dull and boring. These books are written like you're talking to somebody uh, at a table or even around a campfire. It's just, it makes you want to read more which is a really interesting style of writing that I wish that they would bring back. It may not be considered as professional as today, but, uh, you know, I like it. Like, for example, under toothache. Toothache is a sign that there is something seriously wrong with the teeth and only a dentist can correct it permanently. If you can find a cavity in the aching tooth, clean it out with a toothpick. Then insert gently a small piece of cotton on which a drop of oil of cloves has been put. If you can't find a cavity, soak a piece of cotton in spirits of camphor and apply it to the gum. Hot cloth bottles and salt bags may relieve the pain just as they do in an earache. Isn't that nice? Like, I just, I love it. I love it. So, there's a little booklet. And let's go through 101. I don't have all of the, uh, the items that would have been kept in here because they are both partial. Uh, the Mercurochrome Red Gauze. Now for these two kits, I don't have the Mercurochrome Red Gauze, but the description says this is the first dressing and may be applied directly over the wound. See directions on envelope. Mercurochrome Swab. Let's see. No, I don't have a mercurochrome swab either. Break the tip of the tube and apply to surface of wound and surrounding skin to kill germs and prevent infection. Especially valuable for the treatment of cuts and abrasions when bandaging is not necessary. Not dangerous for wounds near the eye. Sterile gauze bandages. And here we go. So this one has been open. Uh, Bower and Black, gauze bandage, sterile, two inches by six yards. And what I think is interesting is this style of gauze that was made back then. It's so much thinner than the gauze that we have today. And kind of looks like maybe some of it might have been used at some point the way that it's been unwrapped. And since it was already open. So there's the gauze bandage. Um, adhesive plaster. For fastening the ends of bandages and holding dressings in place in wounds, pimples, blisters, or boils, sticks to any clean dry surface and has many uses. I don't have adhesive plaster in any of my kits. All of them at one point or another carry them. Um, in fact, I, I think I'm gonna do a video on adhesive plaster all by itself, but I do have this, which is an example from a different first aid kit, and I'll do a separate video on, but it will give us at least an idea of what adhesive plaster looked like. Like so, it's, it's cloth. Now this one, of course, isn't sticky anymore. I don't want to take any more off of it, um, but it's a cloth tape, and uh, Sports tape, I would argue, would be the closest thing. A lot of companies have stopped making adhesive plaster, especially cloth adhesive plaster or adhesive tape, in favor of the uh, the plastic tape. There you go, adhesive plaster, waterproof adhesive plaster. Again, I'm going to do a video later on at some point for that one. First aid for burns. Applied immediately, this ointment affords relief and prevents blisters. So the first aid for burns came on these really old school tubes. 
Now, these type of tubes went away in the 90s. So if you're one of the, the younger viewers and uh, it actually still, still liquid. <laughs> this smells like my grandma's medicine cabinet. <laughs> so first aid for burns from the 1920s, right there. Directions, apply freely to affected part if desired covered with sterile gauze. That takes me back. Soap solvent. Apply direct to reddened parts in case of poison ivy or poison oak infections. Now here is the soap solvent. And uh, let's see. Apply to affected surface with lather with a little water. Work in thoroughly. Then wash with clean water. Repeat this two or three times. Dust with talcum powder, ordinary cornstarch, or flour, or apply a cream of baking soda and water. So when we open up this box, we see there's this little, there's like this, this metal cap thing. Uh. And this. This is your soap solvent. <laughs> Interesting. I kind of wonder. There's like a really thin metal right there. And I almost think that maybe at one point that it was a tube. And then it just kind of disintegrated. It was like a paper tube. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, just, I think it's interesting. Don't know exactly what it was. I got another one that we'll open up. And this is like the first time I opened up this box, by the way. So you're getting my first reaction to this vintage stuff. All right, so there you go. Soap solvent. And Vivo swabs. Vivo swabs for shock or fainting. Break tube at tip and hold near nostrils. A touch of the moistened tip reveal, relieves insect bites or stings. So it comes in this little box, the Vivo swabs. Also an antidote for insect bites. For restoring consciousness in case of fainting, break swab at brush end and inhale. For insect bites, apply to infected parts. Again, I never opened up this box either. As we open it up, what do we get? Oh, look at that. Isn't that something? So this must be considered like the brush end. That's old school, man. Bower and block, vivo swab, break at brush end. So that's the brush. I don't think it has any liquid left in it. I think it all evaporated, maybe? Oh, this one's got a little bit of liquid in it. See the bubble. No, this one does too. Ah, okay, so, yeah. I mean, I was kind of wondering, but yeah. So they're, they're still all sealed. There's three of them in there. All right. Oh, Mercurochrome. I don't know if I should Mercur the Mercurochrome. That was actually the first one. So this is Mercurochrome. Now, if you grew up in the, you know, basically before the 1990s, Mercurochrome was a pretty common thing. It's got a little rubber stopper on it, which is cool. And it's still, still in there. Mercurochrome, HWND number 301, 2% solution. And it's so 
small. It's actually really hard. General antise antiseptic in place of iodine. Use handy applicator rod attached to stopper for applying solution. Mercurochrome does not irritate, burn, or injure tissue as iodine does. Now, if you remember using this, it does burn. It stings. But you know what? I remember stories and everything that uh, and people say that if you use this, then um, you don't scar as bad and it heals pretty quickly. Okay. Oh, this one, this one also has soap solvent. So let's see. This one's being different. Oh, look at that. All right, so this soap solvent is still in its little tube. So I bet the other one was also in a tube originally. And then maybe just time and everything got to it, started eating at it or something. I don't know. But there you go. There's the soap solvent. Directions apply to affected surface and lather with a little water. Work in thoroughly. Then wash with clean water. Repeat this two or three times. Ugh. Huh. There you go. A little too. Yeah, it was used at some point too. Okay. So there's those two from the 1920s. This next one is going to be very similar. Um, these ones from the 1920s pop open like that. And this one, which is in super nice shape, it has a hinge. And this one's actually uh, pretty complete. And it also came in a cloth cover. It still has the snap. And I this one not, doesn't have the Scout logo on it. Which I thought was interesting. Um, but it has a little belt loop to be used. All right, so back to this one. So we open it up, and first thing is the little booklet. This will tell us what date. 1932 is when this one was, which 1932 must have been an interesting year for Bowman Black because there, there's two styles of first aid kits that were sold by Bauer and Black uh, for the Boy Scouts of America. The, this one's like the traditional rectangular one, and it is slightly, just slightly, slightly larger than the 1920s kit. The other thing it has is how to obtain refills for the Boy Scout official first aid kit. A full kit is a ready kit. And on the back it has a Eagle Scout, uh, winner of a Harmon Foundation Award, regards one of the outstanding scouts on the Charleston, West Virginia Council. An Eagle Scout always carries his official kit. And inside it tells you what the contents are. It even has a picture of what the contents were when it was complete, which is pretty cool. I think that's pretty nice. Okay, so for this one, it has adhesive plaster, Bernalet, halozone tablets, handy pad, which is sterile, handy pad, which is borated, mercurochrome swab, soap solvent, sterile gauze bandages, and vivo swabs. So the first one is adhesive plaster, and again, um, I don't have adhesive plaster in this one. The, the scout must have used it. Bernalet, which we've already seen, and Burn away, which I did not, I don't think I had an original box, but there's burn away and it's blue box. And it's just a tube again. Um, Halzone tablets. Now that's something that's new. And that's these little tablets. And for sterilizing contaminated drinking water, see directions on reverse for the directions. Use one tablet for each pint of water, or two if there is suspicion of unusual pollution. Avoid water known to be heavily polluted. Dissolve tablet thoroughly, shaking water from time to time to allow to stand 30 minutes before using. Keep bottles slightly closed and away from light, or tightly closed and away from light. 
So there's that. Uh, handy pad, which is sterile. Now the handy pad that is sterile. I gotta unbury it. And that's when they started using like wax paper to keep things in. And you can kind of see through it. And again, it's it's super thin, light bandaging compared to what we use today and the gauze that we use today. And it says it's three by three inches and it's 16 ply. And that's, that is thin for 16 ply. Um, where was I? Handy pad sterile, handy tape borated. Now, handy tape is not the same as handy pads. Handy tape. Huh. Well, I don't have the bore rated one. I just have these. And what it basically is, is they're, they're band-aids. Ideal for cuts, blisters, and other small wounds. Remove protective cloth, place gauze pad over wound, and fasten with tape. So I still have two of those. And I have these which are out of the packaging. So maybe these are the borated versions because they, they do have the pink in them, which the other ones do not. Um, so maybe these are handy tapes that are borated. Mercurochrome swab. Okay, so it comes in this little box. Never opened it before. All right, it has three tubes. And they're protected in a little carton tubes. So I have two Viva tubes and one Mercure Chrome. And it looks like it's kind of like the same style that the other ones were. Little glass tubes. As you can see it's red, so this is a Mercure Chrome. Break at brush end and shake and apply. Solution 2%. So that's the Mucurochrome swab. Put that back in the little cardboard tube. Keep it nice protected. And Mucurochrome swab. It says break the tip of the tube and apply to surface of wound and surrounding skin to kill germs and prevent infection. Especially valuable for the treatment of cuts and abrasions when bandaging is not necessary. Not dangerous for wounds near the eye. All right, so we already knew that kind of from the last one. And I'm just, since I got it out, I'm just gonna show you the Vivo tubes. It's also carried in a little cardboard tube and a little glass thing. And the brush end is just a piece of cloth, just like the last one. Those away, so I don't get them mixed up. Don't I don't like mixing up kits and pieces. I like to keep them all original. Um, soap solvent. I do not have soap solvent. I bet it's this one actually. It's not labeled soap solvent, but it has the same purpose. Poison ivy ointment for poison oak and poison ivy. Uh, apply to affected surface and lather with a little water. Work on thoroughly, then wash with clean water. Repeat this two or three times. Dust with talcum powder, ordinary cornstarch or flour, or apply a cream of baking soda and water. So I'm gonna open this up. I bet she's gonna be a tube again. Whoa! Whoa! Oh my gosh! It, like guys, it, it, it has falling apart. That, the soap solid must have something that's extremely caustic in it. Look at that. That's, that's the tube of soap solvent that we, you would use for poison ivy. Isn't that nuts? I hope this is safe. I'm not gonna like die from breathing in this dust or something. See, I think that, that's deserving of a like right there for the YouTube video. Yeah, because I might be putting put my life on the line. Okay, so there's the soap solvent. 
sterile gauze bandages. These are both sterile and absorbent, and when folded away, or folded, may be used to cover small wounds, also to hold gauze dressings in place and as ties for splints. So there's two versions. We have the one inch by six yards, and we have the two by six yards. I got these random like tablets that was left in here. Kind of wonder maybe they're like aspirin or something back in the day. I don't know. I don't know. So that is that version of the 1932 um, first aid kit. Quickly put this away so it doesn't get mixed up. The next version comes like this. And this is like, if it was easier to open, it'd actually probably be my favorite one. It's this kit. Bauer and Black. And what I like about it is it's, it's all metal, self-contained, and it's got the little metal belt loop on it. And it has the direction written on it. Uh, for example, wet proof tape, house zone tablets, handy pad, handy tape, mercure chrome, gauze bandages. And this kit should be kept filled if your drug is going to supply the official Bauer and Black item dressings. It's approved by the Boy Scouts of America. Made in the U excuse me, USA. So no. Yeah, it's, it's solid construction, but it can be kind of hard to open. So if you got a, like a first aid emergency or something, that's going to be really difficult <laughs> to get to um, when you're trying to save somebody's life. All right, so I have two examples. I try to, I buy like multiples of two because um, my, my boys are trying to get into the, the living history as, the, as well. So when they go with me, I want to make sure that they had a complete kit. So that's why I always tend to have two of things. But this one says, has a little booklet, 1932. The other one that I have, exact same style, this is a little bit nicer condition. It also says 1932 on it. All right, so I'm gonna quickly go through it. I'm not gonna repeat the ones that we already worked on. Wet proof tape for fastening the ends of bandages and holding dressings and plates. I don't have wet proof tape. That would have been like the adhesive plaster that we talked about. It would have come with Bernoulli, which we already had, Hal Halazone tablets, which comes in a slightly, slightly different bottle, just slightly, uh, just the label, really. Um, the Bernoulli came in this box now, so the blue box, it's a little brown box, and it's still a little tube. And it's a brown tube, go figure. And now we're doing it with like plastic caps instead of the metal caps. And what's interesting is 1932 is at the beginning of the Great Depression. So I wonder if that's kind of has something to do with the changing a little bit of some things like going from metal to plastic or if it's just because plastic became cheaper, more reliable or what the deal is. Uh, handy tape borated, which again, I don't have any in either of my kits. Handy tape borated. Um, Mercurochrome. So here's one and here's one. Both little plastic jars. And this one, like both of these are empty. It's kind of interesting that the older 1920s version with the rubber stopper still was able to have it in it. And uh, the plastic ones, they just kind of dried out. I thought that was, that was kind of interesting. Gauze bandages. And we have this, the handy pads, two handy pads. And they're kept, there's there's two of them in this one envelope. And it's just like uh, the one that I showed you that's really thin. That's kind of nice that it came in an envelope to keep them together. This is a first aid dressing. It may be applied directly to the wound. And that's it. Like that's... 
gauze bandages. Oh no, so there's a difference. Oh, here. So there's the handy pads. The gauze bandages, I have two of them. And I think one of the scouts must have used all of his and replaced it with another brand. But here is the gauze bandage. Now they're being given in boxes. You can see the purple, which is very similar actually to the type of paper that was used in my Civil War, um, what do you call it, a patent lint video, which put a link in there for that. That was a while ago, but that was, that was an interesting experience. Um, but it says the threads at each edge of this bandage are joined together by an actual welding of the cellulosic structure, thereby eliminating raveling and fraying sterilized upper packaging. So now we're seeing a, a difference in technology that's coming about between like 1926 and 1932. Isn't that cool? I, th I think that's fascinating. I think that's awesome. And there's this brand, the Curity Gauze Bandage, USP, sterilized after packaging 10 yards, two inches. Oh, you know what? This is also Bauer and Black. Huh. What do you know about that? Two tens, both from 1932. At least the uh, the booklets are both from 1932, and you have two different packaging for the Bauer and Black. Huh. If this package is broken or open, sterility cannot be guaranteed. That's what's said on this one. This one doesn't have a warning like that. I love that. Like I, I love the history of artifacts, especially when you find things like that, where they're, it's, it's exactly the same year. You know, what, what's the difference? What happened? As you can see, this, look how thin that is. I don't know. Yeah, you can see my fingers through it. But it's it's very, it's not tightly woven per se, but it's, it's woven a little bit tighter than our modern bandages, but it's thinner. That cool. I think that gives us an insight a little bit about how, especially of course, medicine developed over a period of time. Um, but you know, as a Civil War medical reenactor, and then doing this, like the first aid stuff, is naturally interesting to me. Uh, seeing how technology has changed, seeing how things were used, which is another reason why we're going to do a video just on adhesive plaster. Um, because that's a fascinating topic and it's not a term that we really use anymore, but uh, it was essentially like the duct tape of the day. And now I don't want to spoil it. It'd be a different video, different video. Now the first kit had these really small dainty scissors and they're still very sharp and you can still see some of the oil is kind of um, congealed, but they're, they're black scissors and then there's this pair which is bigger which is nice especially for adults and it says steel usa i think there's something above it but i can't make it out can't make out what it says and this thing it's got like a little see that you got a little design on it okay so there's the kits that's uh you know every scout of course you uh, scouts motto is to be prepared and first aid is something that's really pushed a lot in scouting from the cub scouting to uh, the older scouts knowing how to, to handle emergencies knowing how to handle injuries especially since you're out in the woods and kids can be sometimes kind of clumsy it's pretty important that you know that so and that's the video for the first aid kits at least for the ones that would go on the belt and uh, if you like the video please click like if you have any questions, please leave the question. If you have a story, especially a fun scouting story about first aid or like vintage kits and things like that, then share that as well. I've got a couple old school uh, scout first aid stories when I was in the program as a youth. But that, I'll save that maybe for like a story time. But um, if you have a story, please share it below. I'd love to hear it. Please click like, please sub subscribe, check out the Patreon page. And um, I guess I'll see you guys 
next week. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones and take care.